Well, it's great to welcome you today, whether you've been part of our church for a long time or you're just looking in for the first time. We're going to take a moment now to pray together. We invite you as we go through this video to join in as much as you can. But we're going to pause and pray. We're going to then sing some songs of worship to our God. Let's pause. Lord, wherever we're watching from, we thank you today. You can be with us by your Holy Spirit. Come to us wherever we are. May we meet the Lord Jesus and know him. Fill our hearts, we pray. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
As I said at the start, it's really great to have you with us today. If you want to know more about our church, where we are, who we are, what we're about, do get in touch with us. Full contact details are at the end of this video. Why not interact with us on social media? You'll find us on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, click the bell, like the video, make sure you don't miss any of the content we're putting out. But on our church anniversary, we have our thank offering. This is a chance for us to look back on the last year and say, thank you, Lord, your faithfulness has continued for another year. But also to look forward and to sow into what we believe God is calling us into in this time, to share his love. Do you remember when South Norwood High Street looked like this? Or this? Or even this? Or maybe when our church building looked like this? or this? Well clearly since our church began 135 years ago a lot has changed in our area, in the world, in the technology, in all the things of life. But the fundamental thing, the reason our church was planted and started, the good news of Jesus and his love for us remains the same. And so on our church anniversary, we look back and we say, thank you, Lord, for another year of faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for 135 years we're celebrating this year of your grace and your goodness. But that's why we also take our thank offering, because we want to say to God, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sustaining us. But also because we want to sow into the future, because we know even though we've had some great days in the past, God has more. God is not finished with us yet. The mission to share his good news in SC25 and the wider world remains. We still want to grow up in love for God, in, in love for one another and out, sharing the good news with those around us. And we still want to grow in numbers, in increase, because we believe that's what God has called us to, that there are thousands of people around us who don't know Jesus. And we have a wonderful story to share, the same story our forefathers shared. Someone shared it with you, and we want to be those who share it with those around us. And so we want to invite you, if you can, even in this tough financial season, to give to our thank offering, to contribute however you can. We believe God has more for us, and so we're grateful 
for all the gifts we have. And we want to see more. We're going to take a moment to pray now, if you're able to pause where you are. We're going to pray and give thanks to God for his faithfulness to our church, but also pray for our world and situations where there is need. So let's pray now. Loving God, we thank you for your faithfulness these past 134 years and beyond to our church. We thank you for more than 2,000 years. You've been building your church across the world. Lord, we thank you for those who had the vision to start this work. We pray as we look forward to a new season, to a new era, you'll continue to inspire us by your Holy Spirit to lead us, to help us share the good news of Jesus here and in the wider world. Thank you for all those who've been baptised, who've been married, who've been blessed by the ministry of this church. Lord, we pray for those we know who are in need at this time, those who are part of our church, those who are known to us personally. Lord, in the quiet, we hold them before you. We pray particularly for families we know of who are grieving in this season. Lord, we pray for our nation and our world. We hear so much on the news that worries us, that concerns us. Lord, we pray for the wider world and we lift to you ongoing places of conflict, of distress, where people are fleeing, where people are struggling for the basics of life. Lord, may we be filled with your compassion. And as Jesus taught us, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture, it says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God. 
A few years ago, we were on a family holiday. And on one outing, our nephew got a stone in his shoe. Well, it was quickly resolved. But it became a theme for that particular excursion. Anytime he was tired, he wanted to stop, he was fed up, out came this line, I've got a stone in my shoe. I think there were a lot of imaginary stones about that day. I don't know about you, but I don't often think about stones. Maybe if I'm in the garden, they get in the way. Maybe if you work in the building trade. But for most of us, we don't deal with stones on a daily basis. But for Peter, that's a key image in this passage that we heard read today. But he's not thinking about pebbles at the beach or stones in the garden, but stones used for building, particularly building the temple. Massive stones, the kind of stones that caused one of the disciples in Mark 13 to say to Jesus, look teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. But as Peter writes to these scattered Christians to encourage them, He's not writing about physical building and physical stones, but about God building his church. And so as we're thinking about walking with God, being part of the church, there are three things we're going to pick up on. Firstly, foundations. The first picture is Jesus as the cornerstone. The key piece, the foundation. Jesus is described here as the living stone, and Peter draws from lots of Old Testament references, Isaiah 40, Isaiah 28, Psalm 198. Jesus himself quoted that Psalm, talking about himself as the stone. Jesus was rejected by the people, we read in verse 4. We know he was rejected and crucified. But Peter says he's rejected by people, but chosen by God and precious to him. He is the precious cornerstone. The foundation is Jesus Christ. Precious to those who believe, but a stumbling block, a rock you trip up for those who don't believe. As we walk with God personally and together as a church, we need to make sure that we're building on the foundation of Jesus. To follow him, to go his way, to count on him, even when it doesn't make sense. To keep him at the centre, even if it puts us at odds with those around us. And that's the context Peter is writing to. It's sadly possible for us to build our lives on other things, even as churches, to lose sight of the cornerstone and foundation, to put in place lots of programs, lots of initiatives, and lose sight of Jesus. But we need to be sure we're keeping the centre in place. to keep him as our living stone and head. A few weeks ago, we were thinking about God's faithfulness and we looked at this image there, that God is the rock. He is the one that can't be moved. First thing we need to be sure of, that we're building on the foundation, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, the one who was rejected, the living stone. But secondly, Peter writes about our identity because he takes this image of stones and he says you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house because we are connected with Jesus as Christians we also become living stones and using the language of the temple Peter says God no longer dwells in this physical place in Jerusalem but actually we as the believers the Christians are being built into the place where God dwells by his spirit. Being a Christian is not something you can do without other people. Because we, as the bricks, need one another. You and I, as one writer says, are part of God's continually growing temple. We are living stones. We're alive because of Jesus. We're shaped by him to fit together, built on the living stone, Growing together, maybe as that happens, the rough edges get knocked off. If you've ever seen someone do dry stone wall or building with stones. Sometimes they have to chip things away, which isn't always fun. We are being built, which is ongoing, into a spiritual house in which God dwells. Now I know we know this, but the pandemic has reminded us 
that the church is not about the building. It's great to have building and facilities. It's a resource for us to use. But church is not about that. It's not about Sunday services. We are the church being built together into the place where God dwells. We are a spiritual house. It's us and not the building. Christ in you, as Paul says in Colossians, meaning collectively, yes, individually, but collectively, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Peter uses here lots of other phrases to describe the church, many of which have their roots in the Old Testament. They were applied to the people of God in the Old Testament. And now Peter says, now they apply to us as the church. So he says in verse five, we're living stones, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering sacrifices to God. This is temple language. But then he says, you to the church, the Christians he's writing to, and to us, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, who calls you out of darkness and in to his wonderful light. Far from just being this ragtag group of outcasts, which they may have been seen as, and we may be seen as, in the eyes of those around us, Peter says the church has a purpose, a new identity together being built. It's easy, isn't it, if you've been around church any length of time to moan about the church. Maybe not our church, but it could be our church, a specific church, or the church in general. Why doesn't the church do blah, blah, blah? Oh, I'm fed up with the church, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you'd never say that, but I've certainly heard it a lot. We get it wrong as we try to follow Jesus. We're not quite holy as God is holy, as Peter writes early in the letter. We're still plodding on. Leaders get it wrong, I know I do. But this section of 1 Peter and the whole of the Bible, I think, tells us that the church has a purpose. It's so much more than just a bunch of sinners. So much more than the sum of its parts. It's part of God's amazing plan. We need one another. Once we were individuals, says Peter, once we were not a people, we were just a bunch of outsiders. But now we are a people. We've been brought near. We are the people of God. We have this new status and this new identity because of God's grace. To use a picture the Apostle Paul uses, we are the body of Christ. And through the church, the manifold, the multicoloured, wisdom of God is seen. As one commentator puts it, rebirth entails incorporation into a new community. Church is vital in our walk with God. We're in this together, being built together. And when I say church is vital, I don't just mean that we turn up on a Sunday morning or we log on. I mean that we're in community together, that we're getting to know God together, that we're walking with God together as we become God's dwelling place and he builds his church all across the earth. Which leads to our third point and that is there's a purpose. As the church we have a purpose which is more than the sum of the individual parts. Peter says verse 9 that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful Light. Again, Peter is picking up an Old Testament picture, this time Isaiah 43. My chosen people, I formed them for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. We have this purpose as the new people, to declare God's praise, his excellencies, another translation says, the excellencies of the one who called us out of darkness and into light. Who are we declaring to? Well, firstly, we're declaring to God. We're praising him. But we're also declaring to the world around us. This is our purpose as a church. We talk about growing up, getting to know God, in getting, loving one another and out. It's not just for our own benefit, but it's for the glory of God and the spread of this good news. That as we praise God, we draw others in and invite them to praise God with us. That they might come to know this mercy of God who's called us. That they might come to be People from light to darkness, from hope, from despair into hope. So walking with God, 
It starts with salvation. We're thinking about that a couple of weeks ago as we get to know God, as we're rescued. We grow through prayer, through reading the Bible, through listening as we're thinking about in this series. But we're in this together. When we become a Christian, we join this new community called the church. You can't be an isolated Christian. We are living stones built together. You and I, part of God's continually growing temple. And so we give thanks for 134 years of our church, of South Norwood Baptist Church, of all God has done to build us this far. But our purpose remains to declare his praise for his glory and to declare to the world around. Today we are as people his church if we are in Christ, part of God's plan for the world. Are we building personally and together on this sure foundation? with Christ as the cornerstone? Are we secure in our identity in Christ? And are we active in our purpose? Maybe today you need to come and know Jesus for the first time. Maybe you need to actually join and become part of a church, not just a spectator, but an active part. We encourage you today to follow Jesus as living stones chosen by him. Let's pray. Lord, build your church. Build our church, but build your church across the world. Living stones chosen by you. That many might come to praise you and know your goodness and experience your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Coming towards the end of our video today, thanks for joining us. Hopefully something is connected with you. If you'd like to know more about following Jesus, being part of his church, being part as a living stone, do get in touch with us. We'd love to help you learn more. If you'd like to know more about our church, do get in touch. Full contact details are just coming. I'm going to pray a blessing as we draw to a close. Lord Jesus, may we follow you faithfully. We pray that you will build your church for the glory of the Father and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Come upon us now. Equip us to live for you. Amen. Why not now reach out to someone, encourage them, bless them, let them know you're thinking about them. We're going to be back on this channel on Wednesday for our midweek thought and then our Sunday worship premieres at 5pm. Keep in touch. God bless and take care.